what's Fred got in store for us in the caddy? Well, of course, we always got to deal with Fank. He's in here guarding Fred's secrets, but now he appears to have a chicken head knob on his noggin. All right, Fank, to the important stuff. Today, we have a boutique amplifier. It plays and then fades out, and the timing varies. Sometimes it'll play for 10 minutes, sometimes it'll play for hours, and then whoosh, she fades out. So, we have our typical three questions, and then I've got a fourth one for you. So, number one, is it a bad tube? Is it a bad power supply? Is it a bad connection? Or, is it the fact that they use chicken head knobs? Who knows? So what we're going to do is a visual inspection of the unit. If it passes that, we'll move on to the power applied and test. Let's go. Right, here we go. We're going to do a visual inspection of the amplifier. Since it is fading out, I suspect a bad connection. So the first thing that I do is take my Luxo magnifying glass, well lit, and I sweep the board. Now I'm going to look at every one of these connections. So you probably can't see it, but I sure can see it. We've got a lot of questionable connections on these turret boards. Let me give you a close-up. You can see there are many questionable solder connections. It appears as though there was not enough heat or rosin used on those turret terminals. This one especially, you can watch the lead spin around on the turret and this happens to be the cathode bias resistor. So we'll give a little sweep with a video camera so you can get an idea. There's a lot of connections where you can see the leads are laying at the bottom of the turrets but there's a glob of solder on top so they just weren't flowed correctly. The wiring looks nice. It appears to be Teflon wiring, aluminum chassis. The rest of the build I'm good with but the solder connections need help. Alright, so the amplifier obviously failed the visual inspection, so there's no reason to try a power-up test. We already know what the problem is. So I've got my Heiko station warmed up, and I'm going to try to reflow some connections. I'm hoping that there's not a surface corrosion on the terminals, which will prevent me from soldering. But I think reheating with a little bit of rosin, we should be able to clean up the connections, and I'm going to do them all. So this turret board has 60 terminals, so the reflow process is going to take quite some time. But if you find yourself in this situation, I'd highly suggest that you use this solder. This is vintage Kester solder. It's the real stuff with lead and good rosin. The diameter is 50 thousandths. Well, I'm going to start 
with the main violator which was that bias resistor we could see that spinning on the turret so I'm going to apply a little bit of rosin paste to that turret terminal because I do see some darkening of the terminal which makes me think that's corrosion on it and if there's corrosion on it it's gonna fight me achieving a good solder connection so maybe a little rosin will break that down well here's two of the terminals that I've reflowed this was the one that had the wire that was spinning on the terminal there's some kind of a dark corrosion on the metal and it's making it difficult for the solder to stick it takes a lot of scraping I got a lot of terminals ahead of me I'm doing the best I can I've got about four terminals done it's been a very labor intensive process for some reason these terminals do not want to hold solder it likes to just roll right off of them I'm having to take an exacto knife and a dental pick and scrape the metal getting all the contaminants off of it then I have to flow a lot of solder before it finally bonds to the terminal so this is going to be a very lengthy process well Fred Fink I really don't know about this basic training session it's kind of turned into a lessons learned I don't know why these terminals are so resistant to the adhering of solder there's something going on my guess is is they may be from an inferior supplier if you like to use turret terminals make sure that you're buying good quality components or your project may turn into a boomerang